let's look to the Lord in prayer. Loving Heavenly Father, worshipping you is a privilege and we thank you for the same. Even as we spend some time in your mighty presence today, be with us. Bless us. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. We'll now have our opening hymn. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing a song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. Your angel love and Your soul to anger. Your name is great and Your heart is kind. For all Your goodness, I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like today is taken from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 13, verses 31 to 33. Today's Gospel is taken from Matthew, chapter 13, verses 31 to 33. He presented another parable to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field. And this is smaller than all other seeds. But when it is full grown, it is larger than the garden plants and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and nest in its branches. He spoke another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven, which a woman took and hid in three pecks of flour until it was all leavened. Here ends the reading. Let's pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable unto thee, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Today, we are called to reflect on what it means to be the Christian presence in context of multi-faith communities living together. Sometimes, the Christian community is a minority. In some contexts, minuscule minority. In some contexts, the Christian community is a majority. In both these contexts, the question is, how do you make your Christian presence felt in the multi-religious context? Secularism is differently defined in different places. In some places, it's the state staying away from religion. 
and in some places it is equal respect for all religions and equal distance from all religions. But what is actually the Christian presence in community? We are used to the phrases light and salt. We have been told the Christian presence is the presence of love made manifest. It's the presence of compassion, active and engaged. It is all about justice, living out justice and taking positions on justice. It's all about affirmation of dignity, human dignity and dignity of all life. It's all about mutuality. It is all about respect. Quite a lot of post-colonial critiques has tried to redefine mission and redefine our responsibility as Christians, affirming the local. We have critiqued the military and merchant aspects of mission and has searched for more and more localized, culturally sensitive indigenized ways of being Christians. But through it all, we are always told, live your Christian life in such a way that everybody around respects you for that, loves you for that, and likes you for that. Preach the Christian gospel in such a way that it is not offensive to others in such a way that the next generations will also have the same freedom to preach this gospel of love. For the meditation today, we have two simple, interesting kingdom parables that Jesus spoke to when he spoke about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed that somebody sowed. It grew, though the smallest of the seed first into a shrub, then into a tree, and the birds of the field came and found its place therein. It's like the yeast that a widow took and hid in three portions of dough, and it fermented the whole dough. But when we look about Christian presence, in the present world today, there are some very interesting insights from this particular passage. I would want to draw your attention to some of the basic factors of being Christian in a pluralistic context. The first is the smallness factor, the beauty of smallness. The text says, it is the smallest of the seed but greatest of the shrub, the small mustard shield, going into a greatest of shrub. Botanically, we are not clear how big a mustard tree would grow. As far as we know, it, it grows to a shrub, but the possibility of growth is very evidently seen there. Small, but beautiful. The second image is also of the dough. The dough is not as big in quantity as that of the three portions of dough. The yeast is small in quantity, but the yeast, though small, has a beautiful influence. Christian life in many contexts is very small. Christian presence is very small. But the scripture, kingdom values, tells us small is beautiful, small is enough. The second factor is the potency factor, the potential factor. We are told an apple seed holds the potential 
of a great orchard. Similarly, a mustard seed holds the potential to be the greatest of shrubs, to be the mustard tree. The yeast holds the potential to affect the whole. The potency, the potential within the small to affect the whole is the beauty of Christian presence. It is small, it is small yet potent. Thirdly is the transformation factor, the, influence, the invisible influence. We do not see the processes that goes through within the mustard seed. We see the sprout, we see the sprout growing, but the small mustard seed transforms itself into a great shrub. The dough is being transformed by the little presence of the yeast. It influences the whole. It influences the whole dough. The transformation factor in Christian life, this has always been the call. A transforming presence, a positive influence in the society, an influence of love, an influence of justice, an influence of compassion. Fourthly is the utility factor. Well, the mustard seed grows, grows into a shrub. And Jesus says, the birds of the field come and make their nests in it. It provides the space for the other, space for the other to come and make it nests. Mustard, leaf, mustard leaves, mustard seeds, both are edible. It provides life for the other. And in our context, it's used for cooking, it's cause for, for medicine, for mustard oil, for biodiesel, for different things. But here, it invites the birds of the field to come. Yeast is a microorganism, but it's used for the fermentation. It makes the dough ready to be kneaded into bread, to be made edible. The utility factor, Christian presence and the utility factor, the nest for wandering birds. Christian presence, making what is available useful. When we look at our health ministries, our education ministries, our engagements in the society, in the social life, in the social fabric, this utility factor of this Christian presence is something we should never forget. Fifthly, there is this interaction factor. Diverse elements work together for the common good. The seed, if it stands by itself, stands there. But the seed grows in the ground. It is grounded. Christianity should never be a potted plant. It has to be grounded in the soil of the land, in the culture of the land. It then sprouts, it then grows, it interacts with the context, it, it interacts with what is around it, and it grows and becomes fruitful and a space for the nest. The dough and the east peacefully coexist, but both are transformed, both are transformed for better. Friends, we talk about shared values. We talk to talk about peaceful coexistence. And both these are important in a multi-religious context. We cannot also ignore the initiative factor. Look at the text, the mustard seed. Someone took it and sowed it in the field. The east, a woman took it and mixed it with the dough initiatives for kingdom results. Christian presence is all about initiatives based on kingdom values. Kingdom presence, 
Christian presence becomes meaningful when our presence influences the kingdom values. It's a presence of love, initiative of justice, initiative of peace, initiative of fullness of life in Christ. And finally, we cannot ignore the invisibility factor there. The seed is planted, but it's unseen till its impact is shown. The yeast is hid in the dough, but its impact is shown. Humility, humbleness. The Christians did not make a halaboo of noises. Silently, but living out the Christian life, we can be the influence we're looking for. Friends, Christian presence in a multi-religious context is a presence of love. Let's pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you for the parables of the mustard seed and yeast. Small though we are in many contexts, thank you for reminding us small is beautiful. Thank you for challenging us about the potency within us, the possibilities of transformation. Thank you, Lord, for telling us that we should be useful people, interacting with the context in which we are placed. We thank you, Lord, for reminding us Christian life is all about initiatives of love and justice. Invisible though we are, help us to be a powerful kingdom influence. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. We'll now have a closing hymn. join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen.